everybody, Nick here. And today I got a review for you of this little gem, the uh, TAD Dauntless uh, Mark IV. I'm probably going to say Mark III in there at some point in time just because, well, talking is hard. But it is a Mark IV. I'd like you to rest assured on that one. So um, thank you very, very much to my viewer Wombat for sending this along, along with some other really high quality knives. This is great, and this is a knife I've been looking at for a while, and so it's beautiful to actually get to see one in the flesh. Size comparison, Spyderco Delica, Spyderco PM2, Ontario Rat Number 2, and uh, just for fun, your Strider SNG. So, uh, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the bad, and the ugly of this particular pocket knife. Okay, so... On the good side, there's a lot going on here, and first and foremost is the design, which is reasonably attractive and very clean. I mean, take a look at the titanium here. There's some snail trails and whatnot, it's been used, um, but it's just nicely done. There's not a whole lot of extra stuff going on here, no extra contouring, it's just a nice, smooth bit of titanium with a pivot here, very easy. It just, it's very nice and it's very clean. Same thing on the G10 side, and the blade is just stonewashed. I, I just like it a lot. There's also a very nice symmetry here of blade to handle. They've got similar, kind of on this side, and the, the blade looks kind of similar to the handle in this top contour, and... I mean, it's just, it's nicely done, and the, this mirrors this. I, I, like I said, I'm just telling you that it's beautiful, and you gotta believe me on that one, but at least to me, it sure is. Also, one of the nice thing I like about it is that, symmetrical speaking, your, uh, your titanium and your G10 are almost exactly the same in terms of width and just overall shape, excepting these grooves here, which is nice. A lot of knives that are half titanium, half G10, have very different thicknesses and whatnot, and that's somewhat not pleasing to me. And also, the contouring on the titanium and on the G10 is very, very nice in the hand. And so, actually, that leads to very good ergonomics on this knife. I'm not going to call it great, specifically because of this little hump right there that we'll talk about, but it is very, very nice in the hand. It's quite good in that way, and that's nice. The construction on this knife is uh, rock simple. Absolutely very, very, very easy. Uh, in order to take the thing apart, you twist here, you twist here, you twist here, you're apart. No problem. Inside, it's got some caged bearings, hopefully, maybe you can see that, probably not, that this is riding on, and uh, that's pretty much it, and a G10 backspacer and your lanyard pin in the back here. Speaking of la lanyards, um, check this out. This is your lanyard bar, and hopefully you can see this, that it's actually just a little hollow here and a bar, so if you want to put a lanyard on it, it just loops through there. This means that they don't need to devote more of the handle to, uh, to having a lanyard hole or something like that, and if you don't want a lanyard, it, the knife still looks pretty damn clean without it. So I like that very, very much. That's a good way to do a lanyard on there. The uh, clip is very deep carry, which is good. Chunk of titanium, which is good. No real complaints about the clip. Shows snail trails, but everything will in titanium. Blade steel is S35VM. No complaints there. <laughs> And the biggest thing that jumps out at me about this knife is the action, which is just, oh my god, good. So check this out. It's a thumb stud knife, there's no flipper, nothing like that. But it is still on bearings, like a lot of your high-end flippers. Which means that when you pop the thumb stud, the thing freaking flies open. Oh my god. It's just beautiful. It's the most pleasant thumb stud experience I think I've had on a knife. The Greensmo Norseman's good on the thumb stud side, but it's just not quite as... The ergonomics on the thumb stud just aren't quite as good there. Um, this is really nicely built thumb stud kind of flipper knife. I love the action on this a lot. And on the other side, shutting it, it doesn't quite fall shut in the same way that like the Norseman of the ZT452 does, but it's pretty damn close. And so it's a really, really nice action, which is good. And like I said, it's running on bearings, and on the G10 side, they actually do have a bearing race, a little washer in there that the bearings roll on, and the detent is just perfectly dialed in here. Very, very nicely done there. And so on the good side for this knife, it's a simple thing that's done very, very well. Um, it's a thumb stud opening knife, but it's a really great action. It's a fairly plain titanium and G10 knife, but it's really well designed. It's a fairly boring blade shape, but it's made out of great steel. It, in that way, this is just a really impressive knife. It's doing, it's not trying to do all of that much, but what it's doing, it's doing great. So there you go. There's you could, let's jump into the bad. So on the bad side, uh, here you got your backspacer. 
and your backspacer is unfortunately a little bit of a lint catcher. Um, really not super impressed with that. I do wish they just kind of smoothed that back off so it matches with the uh, G10 on the other side there. I, it just looks a little bit dirtier sooner than it needs to. The uh, pivot screw here is a slot driver, and a flathead screwdriver, that is, and I'm not a huge fan of that. It can certainly be disassembled, and I did, and it worked fine, but it's, well, I don't know. It's very easy to slip out and end up scarring up your G10 or something like that, so I'm not a big fan of slot driver pivots. They've got some advantages, but considering you need torques back here, I just don't see that. Um, this ridge on the back of the knife is the one big design fail for me. You can see there's this little area that pops up above, and in the hand, every part of the knife feels great except this right here, um, because it just digs into your thumb in kind of an unpleasant way, and more so than most jimping shorter. My thumb wants to be laying flat against this top surface here, but it's got this little ridge section, and I just don't see it. Um, and the knife, I feel like, would still be plenty secure in your hand without it. So this little ridge up here is kind of a fail to me um, and really makes it less ergonomic. Um, other bad things, it is made of half G10, and I always knock knives on this because, well, especially if they're pretending to be hard use, having half your knife made out of plastic is not great. Um, we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit there, but it just reduces the hard use credibility uh, a little bit. This is done right, though, in that they've got a steel washer built into your, uh, your G10 here so that the bearings are racing against steel rather than against G10 or rather than using something stupid like Teflon bearings. So it's not so bad, but I'm not a huge fan of it. And then, uh, finally, it's 350 bucks, which is a good amount of money. I mean, this is actually a lot of money. Let's just be clear here. Pretty much, well, most of the things I review are under that line. And, you know, you're past the sleesh buoy. Uh, you're into some really high-end territory in that. But it's not completely out of line given how well that this is done overall. So it's bad, but it's not ugly. What is the ugly? The two ugly things here. First is this little groove right here. Um, it's probably meant for blood or entrails or something tactical and high speed and low drag and murdery. But practically speaking, I refer to this as a crud groove. And what I mean by that is that it's just terribly impractical for EDC. Because let's say that you take your knife out and you cut open an apple. Okay, cool. And you wipe the blade off, but some of the apple juice is going to get stuck in there. So then you're going to put it back in your pocket. And then some of the lint is going to get stuck in the apple juice. And then later that day, you use it to, uh, you know, I don't know, cut open a, uh, a bottle of motor oil to make a funnel out of it. Uh, for the next bottle, and so then you end up with motor oil inside your linty apple juice, and so forth. And yeah, you can go ahead and wipe the blade down, but you're not always going to get up in there. And so you really do need to attack this with like a Q-tip or, you know, a water pick or something like that to get that actually clean. And that just bugs me. It doesn't need to be there in any way, shape, or form. I think, frankly, the knife would be a little prettier without it. And practically speaking, it's just a pain in the neck to keep clean and to keep from contaminating your food and whatnot if you ever use this for food. So, not a big fan there. The other issue is that the blade is fairly thick. Um, it's not completely out of line, mind you. I mean, compared to your PM2, I think it's actually just about the same thickness, if not a little bit thinner. Um, but the grind is very, very shallow. I mean, look... The entire thickness of the blade is present up until this point, and only in this little tiny thing does it dive down to a, to an edge. Um, if you compare it to, say, your ZT562CF here, you can see that the grind on the CF is much, much wider. So that means that it has this entire distance to slope up to the full thickness of the blade, whereas here it just jumps right up there. And that means that this is an okay slicer. It's not terrible. I've definitely had worse. But for EDC kind of slicing, this isn't perfect. I'm, again, it's not too, too bad. I can still use it, and I still did enjoy EDCing this knife, but it's not optimal. They should have full flat ground this, or at least made the blade stock a little bit thinner if you're going to grind it like that. So this is just a more competent EDC slicer. This is a blade that's built for hard use in a lot of ways, but the rest of it isn't. And actually, let's just jump into the conclusion, because that gets there. So in a lot of ways, this is a knife with an identity crisis. The back half of it is a light, kind of lightweight, great in the pocket, everyday carry sort of folder. The front of it is a really hardcore, uh, you know, sharpened pry bar sort of tactical blade. And the thing is, the two halves don't really match because the back half is half plastic and on bearings. 
which doesn't really make sense for this blade. And this blade is way too thick and the grind is way too shallow or way too abrupt, I suppose, to match the rest of the knife. And so it's got a bit of an identity crisis going. But honestly, even with that happening, this is still a damn good knife and it's a gem because it's a simple thing done really, really well. It's got a great clip. It's got great action, great steel, great design. And, you know, there's a whole lot to it. And honestly, it's probably my favorite of the high-speed, low-drag, tactical sorts of looking knives. Uh, this is really nice. It's a lot more practical than, say, a Strider um, and than a lot of the other ones. And it's, it's just really, really nice on the whole. And if somebody said, you know, hey, Nick, we're having a high-speed, low-drag show. You got to dress up with your fatigues and your molly and all that stuff. Um, you know, this is probably what I'd reach for because it's in that tradition very much. But it's also a really great knife for everyday carry. Um, and if it tells you anything, I've asked myself several times now if I was going to buy this guy. Because it is a really nice knife. And it's the favorite of the ones that Wombat sent me. I got a Strider, the De Boya, the Tolk, and this guy, and they're really, this kind of wins by a mile. So I don't know that I'm going to end up buying one. Maybe once I send it back, I'm going to realize I made a terrible mistake and pick one up. Maybe in carbon fiber, that'd be even cooler. But uh, other way. So it's a gem, 100%. It's a great little EDC blade. Uh, this is one of few knives Jim Skelton and I have both reviewed, and I agree with him 100%. There's a whole lot of great stuff going on here. And it's a really high quality knife. I'm hoping that Mark V has a better understanding of whether this is a high speed, low drag, sharp and pry bar or a lightweight everyday carry knife. But either way, Mark IV is still pretty damn good. And if you can handle the price and you're okay with a little bit of uh, split personality here, go ahead and pick one up. You'll love it. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day.